A very warm welcome along to Sports Bet TV with our racing uh, tipping bulletin. Paul Alster here with you as always. And I'm looking forward to some very good racing in Britain on the 8th of May on Saturday. So I have four selections for you and they're all on the ITV televised coverage. So it's going to be uh, uh, some interesting uh, couple of hours there that we'll have to uh, try and uh, get a few quid off those, those uh, nasty old bookies. Now, if you're new to the service, I'm always trying to find decent prices, and that is very much the case as always um, for this bulletin. And if you're new as well, press the subscribe button just below this screen and the bell icon as well, and then you'll be kept in touch with all our latest um, bulletins. And uh, remember to share the video as well. The more, the merrier uh, is what I say. We did have a midweek bulletin this week, actually, uh, for the... Uh, the two final days of the Chester meeting. This bulletin is recorded just ahead of Friday's action, so we don't know what happened in the Chester Cup and our selection there, 20 to 1 shot, Glen Cadam Glory. Unfortunately, my other selection for Friday is a non-runner, Kenzai Warrior. While on Thursday, not a bad um, a couple of selections. Copper Knight recommended 7 to 1 each way, finished third in the opening sprint handicap. And Earlswood, who I put up at 16 to 1, ran third in the listed uh, Derby trial. But of course, most firms were only paying two places. So if you were lucky, you might have got a firm that paid three, but most of them were only two. He did outrun his odds, though, uh, without a, a shadow uh, of a doubt. So uh, on to Saturday's selection. Oh, just before I do, I know a lot of you just joined in for the weekend. And last weekend, we had a really good time of things uh, uh, one winner, Sir Ron Priestley, two very nice prize placed horses, including Fev Rover in the 1000 Guineas. And although I didn't tip it, as uh, somebody described it, which I love, the gift that keeps on giving, uh, Jeff Kidder won again over at Punchestown, this time in grade one company. And he has just been remarkable ever since we tipped him and he won at 80 to one. He's uh, just kept on winning and defying all the odds. I didn't put him up because I thought maybe this would be one bridge too far. Uh, and I thought that at 12 to one, there wasn't a huge amount of value, but then he drifted so much that even I had to step back in for a few bob when I saw him touching, uh, well, nearly 40 to one on the exchanges. So I hope quite a few of you, and I, I know quite a few uh, stuck with Jeff Kidder and uh, well, who knows, he might be a champion hurdle horse next season. Yeah, sky's the limit. Uh, wasn't he a good thing in that Boodle's hurdle at Cheltenham uh, on day one of uh, the uh, festival? Great that we found it. Now on to Saturday. As I say, they're all on ITV. Um, we start at Lingfield in the 2.15, which is the Phillies Oaks trial over nearly a mile and a half. Uh, nine runners, the forecast ground good, good to soft in places. Now, John Gosden has won uh, this race in three of the last four years, including the last two years with favourites. Um, and in 2017, he won it with Hartford Dancer, who was rated just 76 going into the race, and she belied her odds and won, and then went on to finish second in the group to uh, Ribblesdale Stakes. So I think that's very interesting, and you should just bear this in mind as I go forward. Now, John Gosden, of course, it's not John, it's John and Thady Gosden uh, these days. They have um, Loving Dream, who is the preferred of their two, uh, owned by the Lordship Stud, which, of course, uh, is uh, Sir Andrew Lloyd Webber. Um, and this is a, a good filly who won on her debut in an all-weather mile maiden at Wolverhampton in December. And then she was second at Weatherby in what probably will turn out to be a red-hot race behind a high-class a horse called Noon Star, who could very easily uh, be uh, a Group 1 filly. So um, Loving Dream does look to have a, a very strong hand, and uh, Frankie de Tori is going to be on board. Now, among other fancied horses in the race is Martin Mead's Technique, who is forecast as favourite, a winner of Wolverhampton Maiden on its debut in January over nearly a mile and a quarter, and then beaten just ahead at Epsom by Werko in the Blue Ribboned uh, Trial, a good effort staying on, but that form wasn't franked by Worko just uh, the other day in the Chester Vars, so I, I'm not overly convinced by technique. We've then got the Appleby uh, Godolphin horse, Nash Nasher. Charlie Appleby's horse is going very, very well. And this one won a Lingfield Mile Novice 
And then um, at Sandown, a mile and a quarter, um, it won there 15 days ago in another novice race. So it's a very interesting uh, contender. And Aidan O'Brien, of course, always has a runner in a classic trial, this time Divinely, who was a Group 3 winner last season on heavy ground at the Curra as a two-year-old, uh, went on to finish eighth in the Group 1 Moy Glare Stunt Stakes. Just not convinced by uh, Divinely for this race. And the one I'm suggesting here is actually John and Thady Gosden's second string. It's called Regent. Uh, John sharing the training duties now with his son Thady, to whom he's going to hand over the reins probably in a few years time and Regent is written by Martin Harley. Now she's only rated 83, a long way behind some of the market principles but as I pointed out earlier John Gosden won with a 76 rated horse just four years ago and Regent is, well she's very well named because she's regally bred. Um, she made her debut up in uh, February at Kempton over seven furlongs where she was so green, really slow away came home in third over seven furlongs and then in March she won at Chelmsford a mile novice stakes again she dwelt um, she was very very green but she stayed on to lead near the finish and then at Linkfield on March the 26th stepping up to a mile and a quarter on the all-weather again slowly away the penny has taken time to drop but she stayed on again and led near the finish and gradually she's getting um, the hang of things now, the bare form is not good enough to win this race, I'll be quite straight with you, but I think the potential is there and the fact that the Gosdens have put her into this race is very significant. Now, also, her pedigree suggests she's going to get better and better as she gets older and steps up in trips. She's by the great Frankel, and she's a half-sister to Midas Touch, who was second in the Irish Derby, and to the superb filly Coronet for the same owners as Regent, and she was twice a Group 1 winner. Uh, over middle distances. So this filly is going to come into her own over this trip. And if she cannot give away too much ground at the start, and hopefully Martin Harley will be getting a good grip of her, ready to bounce her out as well as possible, I think she's going to run very, very well indeed. Now, at the time of this recording, early Friday afternoon, uh, 12 to 1 is the odds on offer each way with three places um, allowed for Regent. And I think that in general, that's a very, very fair uh, price. So I'm happy to go with Regent for John and Thaisdy Gosden and Martin Harley to win the Oaks trial, 12 to one each way, even for a place is a pretty good odds, I'd say. Now the second race, also on ITV, uh, is the 2.30 at Ascot, where we have the mile and a half Buckhound stakes. Uh, this is a listed contest, it's a good event. It's a race in which Roger Varian has done well. He's won three of the last 10 renewals. And this year he runs an, a horse that's new to him, but was trained last season and did well for Jessica Harrington in Ireland. It's called Gold Maze. And that one's a little bit of a dark horse because it's quite hard to cross-reference the Irish form with um, the British form. Now, Andrew Balding won last year's race with Dashing Willoughby and he runs both Alawak and Tribal Craft, but having had a close look at them, I'll be surprised if either is good enough. Um, one point to bear in mind is that the longest price winner of this race in the last 10 years is eight to one. So it's not a race for really big shocks. That was actually Desert Encounter who was entered for this, but is already a non-runner. And uh, we've got the Crisfords, uh, Simon and Ed Crisford, they've got Without a Fight, who is a very progressive colt I did well last season and was second in the John Porter Stakes Group 3 at Newbury on his reappearance three weeks ago. And that form, I think, is quite useful. And then Alba Flora for Rafe Beckett, who was another progressive sort in 2020. and was only beaten ahead at Ascot in a, a listed race over a mile and three quarters in October. So there are absolutely no stamina doubts there. Richard Hannon runs Lost Egan, Eden, who's two from three on the all-weather, but he's untried on turf. And then one I nearly recommended, Sir Michael Stout's Laffey, who won over course and distance in September off a mark of 101 in a handicap. And on his reappearance, he was fourth to Sir Ron Priestley, who I tipped you last week and won. And I think the form of that race is very good because the runner up to Sir Ron Priestley went on to finish second to Stradivarius in the Cigaro Stakes. So that is very strong form. And uh, Laffey, who won the Old Newton Cup last season, um, uh, I, I think is uh, very, very interesting 
um, indeed. In fact, he was second to Deja in the old Newton Cup. And it is Deja, D-E-J-A, Deja, trained by Peter Chappelheim and the mount of Jim Crowley, who is my su suggestion here. He's a six-year-old. He's lightly raised. He's won five of his 10 races. Now, Peter Chappelheim, for younger viewers of this bulletin, may not be an overly familiar name, really, a trainer that doesn't have many runners these days. But in his time, he's been one of the great trainers, certainly of the 90s and um, up to the mid 2000s. He's had his ups and downs, his personal battles are very well documented. But remember that Peter Chappelheim set the racing world alight, not just the British racing alight, in the early 90s by winning the Guineas with Rodrigo de Triano and then Dr. Devious winning the Derby. And then he had Spectrum, of course, it was very high class. White Muzzle nearly won the arc. Um, Commander Collins' victory note. And then he came back, he made a great comeback to win the Derby in 2007 with Authorised. And of course, his last Group 1 winner, I think, was Marcel in the Racing Post Trophy in 2015. He doesn't have many horses, but for me, you don't forget how to train horses. You just don't get the opportunities, as we saw with Henry Cecil at one point before his revival. And I think Peter's got a good one here in Deja, who was second over the course and distance in June of last year at Royal Ascot in the Duke of Edinburgh handicap off a mark of 100. He then beat Laffey at Haydock in that old Newton Cup off a mark of 105. And then he didn't stay the one and three quarter miles of the Ebor handicap at York last August off 112. Now, he also ran in the John Porter Stakes at Newbury as his seasonal reappearance. And I don't think he was fully wound up for that by any means. He shaped nicely, but as soon as the tempo was raised, looked to me as if he just blew up, he changed his legs and um, he wasn't knocked about at all in the race won by Al Arsi. Um, so he does have a little bit to find on one or two form lines, but he's the course and distance winner who will be better for that first run back. The track and the ground suit him. And I've already noted that there's been good money for him. I was going to tell you that he's a six to one shot, having been 13 to two. But at the time of this recording, he's already down to five to one. And I think the dogs are starting to bark this one. So Deja, five to one each way. And if you with Skybet, and I know a lot of people have accounts with them, they're offering four places, which is very good. And by the time the markets really get cracking, you may well be able to get four places elsewhere or even beat the five to one that's currently on offer. So Deja in the 2.30 at Ascot is my second selection of uh, Saturday. And then I'll take you back to Lingfield to the Derby trial at 2.50 while you're, you don't need to flick around the channels. It's all on ITV. Uh, nearly a mile and a half, of course, the Derby trial. Um, it is an interesting race. Um, Adeja for Godolphin is likely to be favorite. Um, he won as a two-year-old over a mile at Nottingham by nine lengths, a very impressive visually, but the form hasn't worked out, but he did not run well on his reappearance, staying on really strongly to be beaten only half a length by Alan Quir in the classic trial at Sandown. Now he's a big, big, powerful horses, Godolphin Colt. I'll be interested to see how he comes down the hill and around the corner into the home straight. Remember, Lingfield is probably the most similar track to Epsom that there is. And um, I'm, I, I'm just not convinced about him for a couple of reasons, but he certainly is a big, powerful horse. Now, Aidan O'Brien runs two in the race, and he's won three of the last eight renewals, two of them with horses that weren't any great shakes, to be honest, Nevis and Kilimanjaro. But two years ago, in 2019, he won the Derby trial at Lingfield with Anthony Van Dyke, ill-fated Anthony Van Dyke, who went on to win the Derby of course. So it's not insignificant that he has a couple of runners here. And Frankie de Tori is on Carlisle Bay, the winner of a Tipperary maiden on his debut last season, um, and who uh, ran well in a group three uh, behind Flying Visit in late October last season. Hasn't been seen since, but he's a potentially nice horse. But the horse I'm going with here is Aiden's other runner, and this is Kiprios with Ryan Moore on board for Aiden. Uh, this horse has an absolutely superb pedigree. He's by the great Galileo, and he's a full brother to three winners. That include Falcon 8, who's set to carry top weight in the Chester Cup uh, just a, a couple of hours after, or even an hour or so, after 
uh, I've recorded this bulletin for you. Now he's also a full brother to search for a song who's a multiple grade one winner, has won two Irish St. Ledgers, and he's a half brother to the great free eagle who of course won that great uh, Prince of Wales' stakes uh, group one at Ascot um, and run well in many other big races. Another half brother, Custom Cut, won 13 races, including three group threes and three group twos as well. So what a pedigree. And he made a winning debut this horse at Galway last season on heavy ground over a mile, very green indeed, and really did knuckle down well to get up in the closing stages. His only poor run was at Newmarket at the end of last season where he was a favorite for a group three and ran inexplicably badly. Just had an off day, maybe he didn't travel over so well, uh, but uh, he disappointed. So I was really pleased to see him come back and win well at Cork. I do a lot of the Irish racing presenting on internet radio and I was watching that race closely. I really like the way he kept on to beat O'Reilly, stayed on well. Um, he's learning on the job all the time, this horse. And one really significant thing is that Shami Heffernan, who rode the horse that day when he was interviewed afterwards, kind of let it slip, I think, because normally they're pretty tight-lipped about pecking orders at Bally Doyle. Now, we know they've got Bolshoi Ballet, who I think could very easily uh, become an even stronger favourite for the Derby after uh, Sunday's racing. But Shami Heffernan said of Kiprios, uh, when interviewed, he said, he's right up there or just behind the best of them. So that means he's very close to the top of the pecking order at Bally Doyle. And I think that's significant. And that's good enough for me. He's 100 to 30 uh, with bet 365 at the time of this recording. That's the best odds on offer that I can see. And it's a win bet. It's not an each way. It's a win bet on Kiprios in the Derby trial at Lingfield at 250 for the great Aidan O'Brien and uh, the uh, Smiler, Smiler himself, Ryan Moore. Now, the last race I'm coming to is at Ascot, the 340, also on ITV. Just the 29 runners here. I, I love a challenge. Uh, the Victoria Cup, cavalry charged around the straight seven furlongs. You wanna be with a bookie that's paying at least six places here. Do you offer 340? There are so many with a chance, at least 20 of them. I'm not going to go through them all. You'll be very pleased to hear. Um, loads of chances. We don't quite know if there's going to be a draw bias that may become apparent by the time the race is run. And they're also likely to split into two, possibly even three groups. So you need luck with the draw, you need luck with the split, and you need a bit of luck in running when there are so many horses all over the place. Now, Eight to one favourite is what I'm seeing at the moment for Acquitted, trained by Hugo Palmer and the Mount of Tom Marquand. He was second in the spring mile at Doncaster in March and he drops back to seven furlongs, which will probably suit. He's only gone up a pound. I'm not going to go through them all, but here are a few I've put on my short list. Raising Sand is a course specialist, invariably goes well here for Jamie Osborne and his daughter is on board claiming seven pounds. Uh, Muta Kyle for Richard Hannan. Uh, very good second at Thursk recently, and he won the Buckingham Palace handicap at Royal Ascot over the course and distance in June of last year, but is £13 higher. He is progressive, though. Now, at a price, Ropey Guest, I think, is interesting for George Margerson. He was fourth over course and distance last June in the Jersey Stakes, and um, that was on his first start of the season, and it's more of the same here. So, Ropey Guest, and one at a very big price is a Northern Raider called Kaiso, with uh, trained by Tinky Winky, uh, Nigel Tinkler up there at Malton. And uh, he was second over course and distance in 2019 to raising sand in the very valuable international stake. So it's interesting that uh, traveling him down for this race. So those are a few for you to consider. But my choice here is called Chief of Chiefs. And he's trained by Charlie Fellows, who's a jolly good fellow. And Jamie Spencer is on board. Jamie Spencer, the Marmite jockey, um, people seem to either love him or hate him. There's no half measures. I'm in the former camp. I really like Jamie Spencer. He's got great hands. He's a real thinker. Uh, very nice guy. Good fun to be around. Very amusing. And I think he's perfect for Chief of Chiefs. Now, this horse has lots of form in big handicaps. He's an eight-year-old. He's been around the block many times. A winner of six of his 33 starts. Now, he won the Silver Wokingham handicap at Ascot 
in June, uh, in the uh, last season in June, off a mark of 95 over six furlongs. But don't worry, he's won over a mile a few times as well, so there are no stamina issues. Now, he's a hold-up horse. He has to come late, and you need, you need a ballsy jockey, one that's prepared to sit and hold on to the horse and wait and wait and wait and gradually make his way through. And there's none better for me than Jamie Spencer for doing that. Uh, now, the other thing that's turned me on to this horse is that he's drawn bang in the middle. He's drawn 15 of 29. So that means that having seen what's happened earlier on in the day, or even once they're off and running and racing, Spencer, who's as smart as they come in my book, will be able to go whichever way he wants. If, if he sees the group on the left are faster, he can move over there. If he sees the group on the right are faster, he can go there. Or he can just go quickest uh, uh, way between two points straight up the middle. So I think he's got the draw. He's got the jockey. He's going to get a very strong pace, which he loves to come off. But if you've got a weaker ticker, then this might not be the horse for you because he's going to come late and uh, it's going to be tight if he manages to get through and gets all the uh, runs that you need. He didn't get that on his reappearance. It was in the six furlong Camage Trophy at Doncaster. He was blocked at least twice on the bridle, couldn't get out. And in the end, he finished fifth. So I'm hoping a bit of luck for Chief of Chiefs. He's 11 to one each way at the time of this recording. And that's for six places with Boyle Sports. I see Labrooks have gone 12s, but uh, at the moment they're only offering four places, which is a bit stingy on a 29 runner handicap. Maybe they'll wake up and uh, offer better terms. But uh, 11 to one each way, I think it's a fair price for Chief of Chiefs in the Victoria Cup at Ascot at 340. He's the last of my selections for Saturday. Let's hope he and the other three run well. And we continue what's uh, been a good start to the month after a bit of a, a dodgy April, the first uh, losing month in seven months that we had having made very big profits prior to that. So enjoy your weekend racing. I think the classic picture will become quite a lot clearer. And of course, next week, uh, we've got the York meeting and the Dante, and I'll have a midweek bulletin for you as well. But for now from me, Paul Alster, I wish you a great weekend and look forward to you joining me again midweek for more racing tips. Bye-bye for now.